but to restore order in Berlin for me. Raymer turned the ministry into a command post and informed all military units in Berlin they were under his control. Propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels then addressed the Führer's faithful troops, telling them of the plot to assassinate the Führer. Dr. Hans Gisavius, a co-conspirator, recalls how Stauffenberg's plan began to unravel. Then it was a performance you will never forget in your life if somebody comes who just was supposed to have killed a Hitler. He really was a master of the different rooms and he rushed from one room to the other and you heard the telephones ring and there was a permanent ringing from Paris, from Königsberg, from Vienna, wherever you liked. Maybe he made a certain overstatement and said, oh, he's dead and oh, Keitler is lying. But in any case, he mastered that business, business to convince the uh, reluctant uh, phoners on the other side of the telephone. But as messages crossed back and forth across the Third Reich, the Nazis closed in on the conspirators. I had certain trouble with Stauffenberg because uh, the plans had failed, we had missed a lot of time, so I said during the uh, hours in the Bendler Street to Stauffenberg again and again, Stauffenberg, let's go ahead. Let's not wait till the troops are in. Let's start that whole business with the news cars. After all, that will be then something, if all other things fail, that we have gotten our version of the day in the air. But here you see the typical problem of an officer, staff officer, at least a German staff officer. Even this dynamic Stoffberg did not like that idea. You see, he said, no, we have made that plan and orders are orders and the troops will do their job. So it does not matter whether we do it in one hour or other hour later. And so we missed that chance. Actually, the broadcasting house was not protected by SS guards and we should have gone into it and nobody had prevented us. It's a pity that this did not happen. At the Berlin War Ministry, Stauffenberg and other key plotters were surrounded. They included Albrecht, Werner von Heften, Metz von Kavinheim, and General Ludwig Beck, who would have assumed the role of head of state if Hitler had been assassinated. Outmaneuvered by Goebbels and Reimer, the plotters could do nothing but await their arrest. Goebbels had saved Berlin for Hitler. General Fromm led the arresting party. At the ensuing trial, General Höppner, a co-conspirator, described what happened next. Yeah. Stauffenberg and the other conspirators were taken outside the building and immediately shot. A bronze plaque commemorates where they fell. Beck was left to commit suicide. After he refused, he was shot by a fellow officer. 
At 10 p.m. the same night, Hitler recorded a broadcast to the German people. He revealed to the nation the plot to kill him and boasted of his miraculous survival. Hitler was determined to wreak a terrible vengeance on all those associated with Stauffenberg's conspiracy. The July bomb plot was the closest any group of German conspirators had come to killing him. The day after the bombing, Hitler was already planning his response. He and Luftwaffe chief Hermann Goering attended the funeral of General Korten, one of the four officers killed in the blast. He also visited the wounded in hospital. Meanwhile, on Hitler's orders, arrests began throughout the Third Reich. Senior conspirators were rooted out and immediately arrested, including Admiral Canaris, head of the intelligence service. General Franz Halder, Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces. And Dr. Schacht, pre-war governor of the Reichsbank. The extent of the conspiracy was a profound blow to Hitler. Everyone entering his presence was now checked and searched. Stauffenberg's corpse was cremated. Other conspirators were hanged from meat hooks with piano wire nooses. Their last moments of agony were filmed for Hitler to see. Field Marshal von Kluger, commander of the armies on the Western Front, killed himself rather than face investigation in Berlin. Even Hitler's favorite general, Erwin Rommel, was implicated. He was given the option of suicide in return for no reprisals against his family. He took poison and received a lavish state funeral. But other conspirators were displayed at notorious show trials in Berlin. Retired Field Marshal Erwin von Witzleben was the highest ranking officer on trial. One of the opposition's earliest conspirators, his humiliation included being stripped of his uniform. The presiding judge took particular pleasure in sentencing him. Altogether, some 5,000 people were executed. By mid-1944, most Allied commanders were convinced that Hitler was a liability to his own people. But British plans for his assassination, known as Operation Foxley, continued. Its details remained secret for 50 years until finally released by the Public Record Office. Operation Foxley centered on Hitler's residence near Berchtesgaden in the Bavarian Alps. Four options were considered. The first involved using a local anti-Nazi agent to infiltrate the kitchen and place a tasteless, odorless poison into the Führer's apple juice. The effects would slowly kill him after six or seven days. The poison was devised by SOE scientists who also suggested